Yeah, I mean, I studied international relations with a specialty also in IT. And um, after I joined really IBM, where I learned the IT industry end to end, like hardware, <laughs> server side, but also to, to the services and um, worked in many large international projects. And um, yeah, all through my experience in IT, I would say I've always figured out that IT security was treated as something that is um, like a rather a check on a list uh, of a compliance department than anything that enables a product uh, inherently or that like um, is a design integral part of a design and uh, that's something that actually stuck me and and I was with everything that is going on, on the other hand, where you want to create more personalized services, more touch points with users uh, for customer facing applications, if it's a, it's across industries, right? It's um, especially in financial services. This is kind of something that is not working anymore with, with something static and something that's just for, for pre compliance. But um, it was, I thought it's a very interesting space to innovate in like optimizing usability and security at the same time for customer facing applications. And so this is what Futurey does. Um, I met my two co-founders in, in the US back then, and um, they were just coming out of research, really looking into the same area. And um, yeah, we found each other and we we're excited about the same topic. And um, there, there we went off. And so it's, we gave each other, we gave us um, for this venture a half a year to see if we have some kind of market feedback. So which uh, we would have uh, translated in investor interest or uh, customers. And we said, if, if this is not going to happen, we're going to let it die. Then it was just an interesting phase. Uh, but um, if there is market interest, um, we're definitely going to pursue it. And that's what happened. And um, yeah, now we are four years in almost. I would say we are privileged in Switzerland to have a really um, great education system that is inclusive, like compared to the US where it's really, uh, unfortunately, only for a limited amount of privileged people, like very qualitative uh, education. Um, however, I think also during the COVID-19 days, it became very clear that digitization is something that is not just nice to have, but it's really what every organization needs to embrace full force. Um, and I think there we still have some areas that we have to catch up because uh, what it showed is during those, those days that it depended very much on the individual, either regional organization or even teacher, if they had put into place um, where children could um, keep on working in a collaborative way um, through digital channels or if they were totally um, basically left with their parents to teach them from a, a printed <laughs> documentation for the time and um, so this is a huge accelerator for this trend and a huge I would say recognizing especially on um, the decision taking level that it's not a cosmetic uh, element to have uh, digital channels in place. It's not nice to have, but it is really a must for um, the modern way of collaboration to also provide to the students a uh, chance to interact um, digitally and um, to the teachers to, to enable them bottom up.